Great. Um, so we have to we have to talk about this again. You know, the governor just Shabbat Shalom. Just turn it a little bit more so we can get Bob in here. If he shows up, if not, we'll just turn it the other way. we got oh. I can do the center one. Oh yeah we're missing one we're missing one but 
it only took two weeks and we got Zoom and YouTube working, so we're very excited. It's good. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Shabbat shalom, Ron. Shabbat shalom. It, now, it's, uh, your video, it's, I can see you very well. Oh, good. Well, now that I'm up close and the, and the chazan just turned the overhead light on. If you want to see us bigger, if you uh, there's different formats. If you look at the top of the Zoom box, you can do speaker view, and then whoever's talking is the big picture, or you can do grid view, and then you have lots of little boxes, and you can see everybody. So depending on how you want to view things, if you want to see everybody, do grid, and have lots of little boxes. If you want to just see us, do speaker view. Right. Boy, he's a Zoom maven. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe a Zoom high school that. graduate. But I learned it quickly <laughs> by... By, by necessity. Larry. Yes. If you look in the upper, it's probably in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see it. It says gallery. It'll say speaker view. It's one of the options there. That's how you can. Did you guys know we installed a, an elevator here in the sanctuary? Oh, yeah? Yeah, watch this. Very good. Oh, Very impressive. Yeah. I didn't here. see anything. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't see the elevator here? <laughs> no. Where is it? Come I'm going to take the stairs, okay? The campus going to take the stairs. <laughs> what, Dave? We get, we get a little punchy on Friday afternoons. It's okay. I have to say this, the congregation is starting to actually fill up. We have about maybe 50, <laughs> 60 people in the congregation. It's exciting. How many? Like 50 or 60 picture people. Wow, a full house. The whole, almost the whole front middle section is full of pictures. And some have two people and some have four people, so. I guess people oh, are sitting on each other's When we open up for regular services on premises, we have to put all those people in the back, so they have to sit in the front. Exactly. All right, it'll be funny. We're just going to leave these up as if it's like reserved for when you come. <laughs> you just got to find your picture. For those of you who are on Zoom, how many of you know how to sew? So I don't know if you saw the email update. So um, the, some uh, nursing homes, senior homes are looking for masks that people will provide to them. So if you can follow what the, uh, the link and sew according to that specification, you can drop them off at the temple. Um, I don't know if you have the right materials or not. You might have to see if Joanne's will deliver. Um, but we are now, uh, they're now asking for masks for their residents.
Shalom, everyone. Kendra and I are going to give ourselves a little pat on the back because we got the technology working. <laughs> Yay! We see you both on Zoom and on YouTube. Well, we don't see you on YouTube, but you see us on YouTube. All eight of you on YouTube. Hi. And there's about a dozen of you on Zoom. Thank you for joining us. Our, is this our third? Our third. Our third. Our third, our third, third. Our third wow. trio Shabbat. But the congregation is growing. The picture people are growing. We have about uh, 50 of you joining us in the congregation. If you haven't yet sent us your picture, please do at the end of the service. Uh, we'll turn the computers, uh, the monitors around so you can see, maybe even see yourself. Um, and if you don't like your seat, just turn in a donation and we'll, uh, we'll upgrade you to a, to a better seat. Um, this is going to be the way that we're doing it for a while. So I'm glad that you're, uh, that you're able to join us and have this be a part of your Shabbat experience. We're going to start on page 10 with Yidid Nefesh. Page 10. Yidid Nefesh Avarachamad. Yidid Nefesh Avarachamad. Meshulchavda. Yeah. 
You know, reliving the 1960s and doing the swim. But we're saying, Yiramayam, the sea, the waves will crash and roar. So we're just making hand motions to the, to the meaning of the words. If you want to revert to the 1960s. And Turn ahead, turn ahead to page 23 for Lachadudi. Page 23, we're going to do verses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9. Small, 
27 for Ms. Moshe, the Psalm for Shabbat, 27. privately through the bottom of page 28. Oh, you know, we say, Vada Shini Varanani, you, Lea Giki Ashat Adonai, Suri Velov Latapo. Page 29. Adonai Mark Lavesh Lavesh Adonai, O Sita Zara, Tikon Tabel Baltimo. And all the Ganem no me or Levat Kamal Kodesh, Adonai, Leor Echyami. Those in mourning the Kaddish, if you're watching us through Zoom uh, and your microphone is on mute, you can unmute it so that we can all hear you saying the Kaddish together. We're on page 30 for the mourners' Kaddish. It Kadal, the It Kadash, Shemei Rabah, 
ואלמה דברה חירותי, ואמליך מלכותי, וחייכון וימכון, וחיי דחור בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קרי, ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רב המדורה, ואלם ומאו מאיה. יהי ברך וישתבח, ויתפעל, ויתרומם, ויתנשא, ויתהדר, ויתעלה, ויתעלה. שמי בקודשה ובייחוד. ואלה מנחול ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, ואמירן בעלמא ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. for the Barku on page 39A. Please join with me in the English in the middle of 39a, where it says the coming of evening light. Baruch atah Adonai, our God, sovereign of time and space, whose word brings the evening dusk, whose wisdom opens the gates of dawn, whose understanding changes the day's division, whose will sets a succession of seasons and arranges the stars in their places in the sky, who creates day and night, rules light before darkness and darkness from light, who makes day pass into night, who distinguishes day from night. Of the night, Svaot is your name, living and ever-present God. May your rule be with us forever and ever. Baruch atah Adonai, who brings each evening's dust. Baruch atah Adonai, Hamari Aravi. Page 40, we sing together, Ahavat Olam. Thank 
Continue privately on page 42. <laughs> Ani Adonai Elohim, Asher Atzehi Tietchem Eret Mitzrayim Liot Lachem Lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohim, Adonai Elohim. Please continue privately in the Hebrew on 43A or B. Please join with me in the English on page 43b in the far left, the column where it says the gift of Shabbat. Sovereign of all creation, God most high, your power is manifest in the destiny of peoples and nations. You delivered Israel from bondage in Egypt, for it is your will no, that we should, should be free. free. You have given us Shabbat to, to commemorate that freedom, to teach us that no one shall be master and no one a slave. Help us to break every shackle asunder, hastening the day when the strong will be just and the weak will no longer no fear. You, our Creator, are mindful of your handiwork. Your ordinances are all conceived in wisdom. You commanded us to cease from our labor, that we may find joy and peace in Shabbat. For we are not made only to labor. We must rest and reflect that we may sense your presence. We thank you, our Creator, for the gift of Shabbat, the gift to Israel that blesses all of humanity. We join together on page 44, Micha Mocha, page 44. Say, I 
If you're able to, you can stand for Vishamar on page 46. Et ta chambre, 
share what they're grateful for or what they are thankful for. So we have them share the good things happening in our community. If you're uh, in the YouTube or if you're with us on Zoom, and if you want to type in either in the comments or in the chat uh, window for Zoom, you can do that. If you want to share that way, that would be a way to share. Um, is there something to share? It's grateful to be here. And we're grateful that Bob keeps coming in. Oh, yeah. Add so much uh, dimension. Not to say that the Khazan singing isn't beautiful, but always adds to have the piano here. Uh, I'm grateful this week. Uh, I found out that a cousin of mine in uh, New Jersey um, has COVID and he was in the hospital. I'm happy that he came home yesterday and he's still recuperating, but he's, uh, he's out of the hospital. So they feel like he's healthy enough and he's getting better. And so I'm grateful for that. Anything, Khazan? Just glad to be here. All right, again, if you want to share with us, you can put it in the YouTube comments or in the chat, in the Zoom. If, you'll, uh, if you're able to, you can rise now. We'll pray the uh, private Amidah, 47 to 52, for uh, just continue with some private meditations. Ana na 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 ufi yagi, ufi yagi te hila te ha. Just looking at one uh, technical thing on the computers while you're finishing up the... We're here, it's just not. Does that fix Do I click back on these? I may be here, here. 
looked like Elaine's screen. Yeah, she took over the screen. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Are you talking about me? Yeah, we are. Took over the screen. Oh, no, I can only see five of you now. I could see yeah, more of you before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Someone, someone's doing a coup d'etat. I push share. Oh. Yeah, so don't share. Don't share. Don't share. I see Gail now. All right, don't share. <laughs> All right, does everybody see the grid again? Yes. All right. No. Who's <laughs> Craig? Craig Warren. What? Craig Warren? Page 54, Kadish Shalem. Israel, <laughs> Amen. Good job, everyone. Good job, Good job, Cantor. Thank you. Good job, Bob. Good job to all my picture people, and good job to the people I can see through Zoom. So I was listening to an interview earlier this week between a reporter and a doctor. And the doctor kept saying that he really disliked uh, people using this term social distancing. This is the, the term that we're, it's ubiquitous. We're using it now all the time to, uh, to explain how we're supposed to stay six feet apart from people in public spaces in order to minimize the spread of the virus. Um, and now even um, if you didn't see the mayor's orders, we're now supposed to also cover our faces with some kind of covering uh, in public. So the doctor wasn't against social distancing. He still wants people to, to do that. Um, he just didn't like the term that we were using to explain how we're supposed to do that. Because he said, in reality, we don't want people to be socially distant. He says, we want people to be physically distant. And so he kept trying to insist that the reporter and, and everybody should use the term physical distancing um, because that's what we really wanna do um, right now. And he's explaining the, the harms of being socially distant because that really not just only um, affects us uh, physically, but mentally as well, because it's bad enough that we have to be physically apart, right? We wanna be able to be uh, with one another. We wanna be able to share our satyrs with our family or their uh, kids or their grandkids. Um, we're not allowed to be all together in shul. A lot of us are out of work or working from home, out of school, can't just even go to a park anymore, can't go to a restaurant, can't go to a movie. All this physical distancing is bad enough. So this doctor was saying it's bad enough, all the physical distancing. Why should we be socially distant? If anything, he said we have to be socially together. So physically distancing, but socially togethering. And sometime soon, God willing, in the, in the near future, we'll get to physical togethering at some point. But in the meantime, we have to stretch out with our social instincts, and we have to actually start practicing more social togethering. We have to be together more socially while we are physically distant. That's what we actually have to be doing right now more and more. And that's a natural human instinct. We see it reflected in the, in the past few weeks in terms of the arc of the story that we've been reading through the Torah, this week we are in Parshat Tzav, the second parasha of the book of Leviticus. It continues on explaining the different animal sacrifices. What does animal sacrifice have to do with social togethering? Well, if you told an ancient Israelite that what he was doing was sacrificing, he wouldn't understand what you were talking about because if you translated that literally into Hebrew, because that's not how it works. They said that what they were doing was called korbanot. Korbanot comes from the word karov, and karov means to draw near, to be close to someone. 
They didn't call it sacrificing. They didn't even call it worship. They said, what we're doing is we're drawing close to God. Now, an animal sacrifice 4,000 years ago was a perfectly normal thing to do if you were a pagan. But if you think about it, it's a pretty strange thing to do if you're now claiming to believe in a non-physical, non-corporeal God. If you believed in a very physical God, if you believed in the lion God, and then you sacrificed a lamb to feed the lion God, it makes perfect sense. But now you're feeding or offering an animal to a non-corporeal God that has no stomach, that has no nose. What's the point? You're just, you know, you're wasting good mutton, basically. What's the point of doing that? Of course, it wasn't wasteful if you saw this as a way of drawing close to God, almost as if they were saying, you know, it's almost like we're sharing a meal with God. And if you don't think that sharing a meal with someone, right, is such an important human activity, I promise you just wait until Wednesday night when we're all in our own individual homes for Seder and we're missing everyone who should be together with us, then for sure we'll know and we'll realize how important it is to simply be physically present in a room together and share a meal. A lot of ancient Israelite religion was seen by uh, the rabbis as some kind of concession to human nature. That's what the Rambam said about human, uh, about uh, animal sacrifice. He teaches that initially, it seems like God was going to was ready to have a very distant relationship from us. God was going to be the king, the ruler, the lawgiver. He was going to be all powerful, all knowing. Again, non corporeal. And he was going to give the law to the people and they would instinctively know how to follow the laws and know how to, how to worship and, and revere this unseeable, unknowable God. But we know from the story the Israelites couldn't handle it. And you know what? To, to a certain extent, we still have a trouble with it today. What they did back then was they made the golden calf. And that kind of ticked God off. Thank God he eventually calmed down and he said, okay, you know what you can do? You can build a building and you can worship me there. You're going to feel that I'm close to you. I'm not going to be in the building. I don't, I don't live there. It's not, it's not my house to live in. But you're going to see it. You're going to use it to worship me. And that's how you will feel close to me. And so, yes, that's what the Israelites did. They built a Mishkan while they were traveling in the desert. They got to Jerusalem. They built a permanent building, the temple. That was destroyed. We now have individual synagogues for us to worship in. We understand. This is our human nature. We want to be in someone's presence. We want to feel close to them together. And we're going to use all these wonderful technologies that we have now that allow us to be socially together in all different kinds of ways. I've been calling uh, some of our members. The executive committee of the synagogue has tried to call all the members. The membership committee has tried to reach out to every single member. I'm sure that you are calling your family and your friends. And it's really, it's a beautiful thing that people are really reaching across this divide and they're trying their best to stay socially together while we're physically distancing. And it's something that we have to keep on doing. It's not enough to just do something once. It's something we're going to have to keep on doing because this is going to keep on going for weeks and weeks and maybe even months more. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that the, uh, the governor, the mayor in introduced these uh, rules about physical distancing when they did because it's going to save lives, thank God. And so we have to keep on doing that. But we don't necessarily just have to be together in our small social groups or family groups that we already have. We can all reach out and be together in this as one community and be socially together in new ways. Imagine if every single congregant, every single member of TRZ said, you know what, I'm going to be responsible for calling a few other people, maybe five to ten other members that I didn't know before. Not people that I'm already friends with, not people that I'm already calling and staying in touch with but people that you never would normally have talked to, I think that would be a beautiful thing. We can check on one another. And to be honest, everybody pretty much is doing okay. But even more, we can start to get to know each other across this divide. We'll, we'll do a check-in and get to know somebody. Talk to somebody you don't normally or maybe would never even talk to at synagogue. So because we're physically distant, we're going to crank up the volume, so to speak, and be more socially together. We're going to use this opportunity to create more and new connections. Now, this person, I'm not promising you to find a new best friend, but you'll find a new friend, a new connection. I'm, don't saying, I'm not saying you have to spend an hour on the phone with this person. Give me five minutes. That's all it takes. I have a couple of back and forth questions. If you, as long as you've checked in and they're actually everyone's doing okay, tell them a little bit about yourself. Ask them about themselves. Where do they do? where they're from, hobbies, interests. It could be a couple of questions. That's it. And then you can hang up and you can learn more 
the following week when you uh, when you check back in. Imagine just one extra phone call a day of five minutes to check on somebody new. It could be a beautiful thing. And if you're like me and sometimes worried that you're going to forget who you called and what you talked about, put a piece of paper next to the phone, write their name down, write down one or two things you talked about. The next time before you call them, you're like, oh, yeah, that person likes whatever. As I said, we're going to be physically distant for a while. This is still going to be weeks and weeks and weeks, but we're social creatures. We want to be together. We need to be together. So we're going to exercise that, that muscle, that social nature, that instinct within us to be socially together. And if you want, you can use it to meet new people here at the synagogue and actually strengthen the bonds of the community. Instead of letting this virus push us apart because we're physically distant, we can do the opposite and say, you know what, we're going to be physically distant and social together. We're going to use the opportunity. We're going to create more bonds, more cohesion. If this is something that you're interested in being a part of, you can call or email Andrea Goodstein. If you don't have her email, it's Andrea Goodstein, A-N-D-R-E-A-G-O-O-D-S-T-E-I-N at gmail.com. Andrea Goodstein at gmail.com. She's our membership vice president here at TRZ. She will be happy to give you some names of some congregants, and we can all start making this wonderful web of connection and strengthen the community and the bonds that we have at TRZ. Shabbat shalom, everyone. It's the first Shabbat of the month, which is nothing special in terms of no birthdays, no anniversaries or anything. So we're just going to continue on with our service. We're going to continue with Aleinu. If you're able to, you can stand. We're in our prayer books. We're on page 56. Aleinu la te pidula le oce hebreshi, che lo asano di goye arazot, ve lo zam lukori, umisha ami modi, libne melek, malche hamlachi, akadosh varuhu, che lo no te jomai me yose baret, mamoy mi garo va jomai mi ma. those who no longer walk this earth. We're grateful to God for the gift of their lives, for the joys we shared, for the cherished memories that never fade. This week will mark the yard sites of Moti Arazi, Esther Becker, Jay Becker, Albert Bernstein, Anna Blumenthal, Mina Cheris, Chaim Chur, Belle Cohen, Esther Cooper, Annabelle Dansker, Elsie Isikowitz, Nathan Glazer, Dorothy Gleischer, Susan Goldstein, Francis Gutman, Joyce Gus, Mashiach Hakim Zadeh, Rose Harrison, Isaac Harrison, Eva Haspel, Jacob Huberman, Jeanette Jonas, Abe Lax, Mildred Levine, Gertrude Littman, Beatrice Luros, Michael and Phyllis Masliach, Emmanuel Newman, Hyman Novak, Marilyn Orzek, Harry Pallas, Francine Perrin, Warren Pollock, Norman Reich, Harry Rubenstein, Lillian Rudnick, David Schwartz, 
Helene Seidman, Jean Simon, Lillian Sitzman, Ellie Sosky, Harold Steinberg, Beatrice Tucker, Anne Weingart, Norman Weinstein, Lisa Weisbrod, Lillian Witkin, and Martin Witkin. And if there's anyone whose name that I missed, you can say it out loud now. And those in mourning, those observing the outside, please stand and join with me in sanctifying God's name with the words of the mourners' Kaddish. If you're joining us through Zoom and you'd like, you can turn on your microphones, unmute them so that we can hear you all together saying the Kaddish. We're on page 58. Yit kadal, yit kadash, shnei raba, ve'alma divrach yirute, ve'am nechmal kute, ve'chayechon v'yom echon, u'chaye de'pol beit Yisrael, ba'galau v'zman kari v'imru amen. Yehi shnei raba mevora, ve'alam u'neu maya, yit parach v'yishtabach v'yitpaar v'yitromam v'yitnase. Vitadar vitale vitalal shme de kutsha brihu. Leila min kol birchata vishirata. Tush bechata vinechamata. Ramiran bealma vinru amen. Yehesh lama raba min shemaya. Achaim alenu veal kol israel vinru amen. Ose shalom bim romal. Uya se shalom alenu veal kol israel vinru amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for joining us either through YouTube or through Zoom. Um, we all have services um, back here at 9 a.m. The links are uh, for Zoom are in your weekly email. On YouTube, you can always just go to TRZ's YouTube channel. Uh, we will continue um, with the noontime class uh, or 12.30 uh, class um, on Monday and Tuesday. We won't probably have it on Wednesday. We should all be uh, busy cooking and cleaning and doing all those stuff for Pesach. Um, there was a lot of details in the, in the Pesach email. Um, if you need Pesach food, it's too late to order from a caterer, but there are people who from their own kitchens will be happy to provide you if you need certain things. You know, if you've got everything else, but you, oh, I don't have the haroset or I need a, I would love a piece of filter fish. We will, we will take care of you. So um, let us know if you need certain Seder foods and we will have it uh, brought to your home. Um, if you want to join my Seder, or it's going to be the Chazan on the second night, I'm going to be hosting the first night, Chazan second night, um, let me know, send me an email, and we will give you the Zoom uh, invitation so that you can join us for Seders, um, and at least be a part of it in that way. Um, what else am I missing? I think that's it. Oh, the, the ways that you can help, I want to say tremendous thank you. A, a lot of you sent in a lot of money. Um, and I was able to write some checks this week um, and more next week. Uh, we were able to raise a few thousand dollars already. It's going to go straight to people who either lost their jobs. Um, some families, uh, both mom and dad lost their jobs. Um, some people just simply had their wages cut or their hours cut. And this is, uh, they're tremendously uh, grateful for this. Um, the new thing that you can do is that there are nursing homes uh, and senior living facilities that need masks. So if you are a, a sewer and know how to do that, there was a link in the email that went out today with instructions on how to do that. And you can drop them off at the temple in the lobby Monday uh, through, I guess, Wednesday. Um, you can do that. It'll the the lobby will be open and you can drop it off and I will bring it to the correct places. Um, please just follow the instructions uh, and the link on how to do that. In addition to continuing to contribute and do other things, um, we really appreciate everything that you're, that you're doing to help the community. And we'll conclude with that. We're gonna conclude with Odiavos Shalom Aleinu. Shalom, my lady. Shalom, oh, Salam, Lady.
Aleinu ve'akul ha'ulam Odebu shalom ba'aleinu Odebu shalom ba'aleinu ve'akul ha'ulam Odebu shalom ba'aleinu Odebu shalom ba'aleinu Odebu shalom ba'aleinu ve'akul ha'ulam Aleinu ve'akul ha'ulam Shalom, shalom, Big thank you to Bob, Nishkart, and Hazad. And if you want to see who was praying with us, we're going to slowly, carefully turn the computer monitors around so if you want to see and find your own face in the Everybody, the Bachelor, the Bachelor, the Bachelor, the Bachelor, the congregation is growing. It's growing. Look at all those people who are here. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hopefully, we'll see some of you tomorrow. Hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. How are you doing? Gail, how are you doing? Rabbi, this is Bill. Where am I sitting?